Hello and welcome back to the Going Google series. My name is Ian Brown. I'm the Assistant Director for Outdoor Adventures within University Recreation here at Angelo State University. Uh, just wanted to reach out and provide an update on uh, a, a form that I've created a long time ago now, almost a year ago, uh, and I've made some several changes to it. And so I just want to show the updates and uh, give a better tutorial, hopefully, on how to use this new tool. The tool I'll be covering today is an officiating tool. Uh, it's evaluating uh, officials at regional or national tournaments or within your own program uh, and it's a way to do it on the fly with instant feedback uh, that's hopefully relevant to the student participating uh, and timely. <clears throat> so the tool here that we start off with is a Google form. Again, you'll need Google Apps account or a G Suite account to, to access this. Um, something as simple as a free Gmail account will work in this case. So the first thing you're going to do is actually go in uh, to the form where it says uh, in my, you'll see a, a link to this folder in my YouTube um, description. Go in here and go ahead and make a copy of both the evaluation tool and the uh, spreadsheet. It might create a duplicate copy of everything and so we're just gonna get rid of the second one here. All right, we're going to go ahead and open up our form. We're going to click the Responses tab. We're going to hit the three-dot menu right here. Hit Select Response Destination. Select an existing spreadsheet. We're going to go in here to select an existing spreadsheet, and we want to go into Copy of Public Example uh, and select that. Okay, once that runs, we're going to open up our spreadsheet here. We're going to copy some of the data from Form Responses 1 over to Form Responses 3 copy that data in, go back to form responses one, form, okay, we're gonna hit delete that, change this title to form responses one in order for that to work, and let's move the tab out of our way. Okay, so now we should have we should be looking at uh, several tabs, our spreadsheet, and everything should be up and running. Uh, why don't we go ahead into each thing and make sure it's updated. We deleted our uh, spreadsheet, or we deleted the tab that uh, all of this information was pulling from. So it's important that we go back in uh, to some of the formulas and just refresh them by simply going in, hitting enter, and hitting enter again. And when we do that, uh, it refreshes it. Okay, so a prime example here would be uh, in the Q column. If you see reference or if you see value or anything popping up, just go ahead and do that. Uh, same thing on the evaluators tab here. We're going to go over here. Uh, and now everything... should be pulling automatically. Okay, so let's let's start with the form here uh, and we, we go to some of our basic questions. So we started with the basic form. Uh, we created um, some basic questions that would give us uh, valuable information to uh, the administrator of officials uh, committee, the chairman of the officials committee, or to uh, the administrator of an intramurals program on a campus. Uh, so number one, who was your evaluator? 
If you're at a tournament, this would probably be your professional staff or your graduate assistants that are helping participate in the evaluation process. Uh, the game date, uh, or I'm sorry, going back to the evaluator, if this is on campus, this might be your supervisor, your student supervisors that are going around and monitoring each um, program. Uh, then your game date, so when did this occur? Uh, ideally, this is pre filled out. So you notice here we, uses, we used radio buttons um, so that we're selecting the date and that makes it a little bit easier than using a, uh, a date button where you have to go in and click uh, on the actual date. Uh, when was the starting gate game time? This would be different situation if you're in a regular season on a intramural program versus an extramural uh, tournament style. Um, if you're doing on-campus program, you're, you're probably going to want the date button there uh, with time. It just takes another second to fill out, um, and this makes it a little bit more efficient when you're, uh, when you're actually at a tournament. Um, we want to make it as easy as possible for our evaluators to participate in the process, and we found that this makes it pretty easy. What field or court number were they on? What was the division that they're in? Uh, how intense was the game? Was it, uh, you know, a blowout and pretty self-explanatory, or was this a high-stakes game where two team, two rivals are competing against each other? Um, and hopefully, that kind of has an impact on the um, the overall process as well. Okay, and then who was your official? Um, you know, this you're going to want, again, pre-filled out with a name, a select names of drop-down menu. Um, if you don't have this and you leave this up to a text box, the downside to that is then um, people might misspell names. Uh, it's going to take longer for people to uh, find that person's name and type it in. Uh, and then you, they might not be getting accurate data. So... It's really important that you pre-fill out your officials um, and it might even be helpful to add in the institution that they're representing if you're at a tournament. Um, a lot of times evaluators will remember, oh that guy's from such and such a uh, university uh, and that, that helps them then find their name from the list. Okay, which position are we evaluating them for? Uh, were they referee, line judge, field judge, back judge, down box? And really, uh, I'm sure most tournaments, you know, you're not necessarily going to that fifth rung and providing um, really good feedback. But let's say you're at a basketball tournament and somebody was on a score table uh, and they were keeping the book and they, they helped the official on the court with, with a good save. Um, this might be some valuable feedback that you can provide in there. Uh, hey, good save on that one calling. Um, so... That might be a useful piece for you. It's going to be up to each, you know, each um, tournament staff to decide what what they're looking for in their feedback. Okay, and then their overall grading, and this is a simple Likert uh, grid question. Uh, so you know, we're we're evaluating them on judgment, game management, rule knowledge and enforcement, position and positioning mechanics, and appearance, hustle, attitude. So it's really it's relatively simple. Uh, for the Likert scale, but it's also enough to give them the quality feedback that we're seeking. Uh, and since uh, we're, we're going from excellent to below average, it's just a four-point scale. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, you could add in additional questions if you wish, but that's going to throw off some of the formulas. So it's a really important that if you add or subtract questions at this point in the process, that you realize the link that that's going to have to the spreadsheet responses. Okay, overall officiating comments, and this is the subjective uh, narrative that you can provide to the individual officials, and they'll see it. Uh, and you might give some coaching to your evaluators here that this is shared with the officials or with those students, so be careful what you put in this first box. Uh, and then the second one is for the administrators of the program. Um, these comments are kept confidential, it's shared only with the administrators, and it's used in an effort to get a more clear picture about a crew or about um, a particular individual that you might not want to share with them uh, off the bat. 
So uh, these are kept confidential and are not shared with the officials. The great thing about this is that when I preview this form, right, I can send, I can view this form anywhere with internet access. So if you're a student doing, if you're a student supervisor evaluating other student officials on campus, you know, they can save this link to their phone on their iPhone or Android phone and it becomes relatively easy for them to just constantly pop this up and submit responses on the fly. Um, that's going to go along with your uh, device policies, you know, if you let your students use phones while they're working or not. Um, you, could, uh, you could have this on a tablet, you could have this on a laptop, uh, anything with internet access uh, and a modern browser will work. Um, and how would you send this out? Well, you, you can send this out a number of w different ways. You just click the send button. You could send the link. You could shorten this link and email it, or you could, um, or you can, uh, you could text it to people. You could email directly. Uh, and so, if you want to send this beforehand, let's say you're a tournament staff and you want to email it out to your uh, your officials committee. This is a great way to receive their feedback on the front end and make any tweaks before they come uh, to the tournament. Also to get them familiar with the evaluation tool. And again, it's responsive to the, to the different devices and the different device sizes. So whether they're working with the latest, biggest iPhone or they've got an older model iPhone or a smaller iPhone or Android phone, uh, it will work and go to that size. Uh, and you might encourage each person to either use portrait or landscape mode depending upon their device and their device type. Okay, so let's say we've filled out a couple of different responses and let's take a look now what the data actually looks like. So the data comes in into the spreadsheet and you can see here that it's giving us when, when the uh, evaluation occurred, who the evaluator was, the game date, the starting game time, um, all of those questions that we were talking about. And again, this is where it becomes really handy. You can see now that everyone is organized and it's spelled the exact same way. Okay, um, That's going to be crucial. You can see here that this is that grid question I was telling you about, and if you add in another category into the grid question, it would ultimately insert a column between N and O and we really don't want to do that right now. Um, the reason being is that that would really throw us for a loop. Okay. So the great thing here is uh, we could take, once we have data in a spreadsheet, we can mine the data to make it more valuable to us. We do that with this tool, um, this this tab right here, which is the officials evaluations tab, okay. And uh, the cool thing is, is you can change the colors and formatting here to to run to your university color scheme or your brand identity that you're shooting for. Uh, but this is a summary view of how your officials perform. Um, I'll show you this. This drop down menu right here is uh, a list of any official that has been evaluated already. So when I select from the drop down menu here, you notice that it's automatically changing and giving me real time data of this particular official. Uh, and notice that this is just dummy data. This isn't actual real data um, on any particular individual from our university. This cell right here is called validated data and it's validated based upon this list of officials that pops up right here. This list of officials is developed from this unique formula and so it pulls out any duplicate officials and it lists the unique indiv uh, individuals in this list right here. Now normally what I do to hide that is I just change my text color from black to white and that removes it. Okay, uh, and If I go down here you can see um, this line right here is actually just my um, titles gives me column headers and you can format it however you want. 
Uh, and then if I go down to the next cell, uh, B22 there, you can see that it is a query. Okay, now a query, for those that aren't too familiar with it, I definitely recommend you do some searching on this. Uh, and there's a great video about queries that I'll try and link in uh, my tutorial as well. Uh, that pulls data from another spreadsheet or from another tab based upon certain criteria that match it. So in this case, I want to pull the data from Form Responses 1. I want to select columns B, H, C, D, and etc. where H, where column H matches the drop down menu that I selected right here. So if I select official, well, no one's named official, so no one query completed with an empty output. Okay, But if I select Bradley Petty here in this example, then it's going to pull up every example of Dr. Petty's uh, evaluations right there. So you can see that um, this would go on, and the great thing about this is, again, it's, it's dynamic, it's not static. And so Dynamic means that it's going to be pulling in as many evaluations there are, real time, it's going to be showing them and displaying the data below. Okay, so you can see that it's going to give you this quality feedback here. Um, it's organizing all of his different information right there. And then if someone gave him uh, some narrative comments, it's going to be uh, showing up here uh, underneath of his overall officiating comments. Again, going back to uh, teaching your teaching your evaluators uh, how to provide that feedback, it's important that they put that quality feedback in there. If they put a comment in there where you're not too sure about the quality of that feedback and you, you might want to cut it, you can't just simply delete this because you see it keeps popping back up. So what you would have to do is I would copy the feedback, go to form responses one, hit command F to find it, okay, and find the data, okay, and that one's for Bradley, so I would go through and delete it there, okay, and you see when I do that, it deletes it from that, uh, from that tab, okay, so, but you notice now I got, I, I, I simply undid that um, just so that the feedback showed back up, but that that would be a good way if if a comment is particularly too harsh or not constructive, um, that would be a good way to get rid of it. All of this data combines for total averages in a summary report. So how did he do overall? Overall, he got a four in judgment, game management, and so th this is an average of averages for his column A, B, C, and so forth. Okay. And his overall score is a 3.8, which is what provides his letter grade. Okay, I'll go to that in just a second. Uh, and then simply a, a bar graph to give another visual representation for those visual people um, what his performance looked like. Okay, now the letter grade. So the letter grade, you can see a little bit of a, of a complicated formula in there using if statements, okay? Uh, I've worked it out over here on the worksheet tab so that if you feel subjectively you want to change that scale a little bit, you can do so and, and feel free to do so here and there are some instructions on how to do that. Uh, but in this case, the total maximum points are four. So uh, from there, this is what the scale would look like. So let's say the total maximum points were actually five you could see that it changes the sliding scale over here and it provides some recommendations but it's not necessarily what you need to go with um, if you wanted to go with something you would just change it over in here okay so that's officials evaluations in a nutshell um, and then the great thing is you could drop in your logo um, and you could do this in a number of ways uh, or you could do things from here in a number of ways. What I recommend uh, works pretty well is to highlight the data, all of the data, and then you're going to simply hit File, Download as PDF Document. And what that does is that takes that live data and it makes it into a static report that then you could then email 
to each individual official. So that's how I would go about sharing the evaluation with the official is not giving them the live data, uh, but giving them a static snapshot of how they performed during that uh, time frame that you were evaluating them. Uh, and so that, that's a, we found that to be a pretty good way to share the data with them. How do you know when an official is done? Well, let's go over to the daily rankings, okay? And the great thing about the daily rankings is that this helps give you an edge of who is your top performer uh, at your tournament or within your program and how are they ranking overall, so combined each day, or how are they ranking on a daily basis, okay? So January 2nd, uh, Dr. Petty was actually first, January 3rd. Third, you can see that uh, Dan actually did a little bit better. Reed did a little bit poorer. January 4th, uh, you can see Reed actually bumped to the middle there. And so this gives you a clear um, and objective way to uh, eliminate your, your bottom rung officials that perhaps need a little bit more experience or a little bit more feedback before they're ready for those more advanced games. Um, if you were looking to pair that with subjective data, the great thing now is now we can go back and let's say, okay, uh, you know, on what day was that? The second, I think it was. Yep, the second. Bradley and Dan are actually, their average is actually tied. So what would we do? Well, I would to determine if Bradley or Dan gets the gets that more high stakes playoff game. I would go then to their subjective data and switch over to the evaluators tab to do so. So the evaluators tab is then going to give me the overall crew comments. That's that private comment list that I was telling you about uh, that gives me the data, the subjective data I might need to make a better decision. Okay, uh, And so you can see here that I'm looking at all of the um, officials that were evaluated by me, okay? Let's say we had another evaluator. We can see in here, uh, this drop-down list would automatically update with additional um, evaluators and we would select different evaluators. So overall, you can see, actually, I've been pretty harsh on officials overall. I'm giving my average uh, for officiating people as a C. So that's, that's pretty strict, uh, and that might be pretty tough. Uh, so again, that's, that's up to each individual program as to how they want to do that. Um, now, one thing I might do here is actually go in and order by B, no, H, descending. And you can see now that that actually organizes all of my officials, it groups my officials by their name, okay, uh, descending or ascending. So that's a lifetime example of uh, updating data on the fly uh, based upon a query that I created. Uh, so you can see me as, a, as an evaluator, I've evaluated 12 total people. Okay, so Let's say you've gone in, you've kind of played around with this, and you feel like you're ready for the next step. You've already duplicated this, and you're ready to go, and you want to send this out to people. What would you do? Well, I would go first into here, highlight my rows, delete my data, okay? Go back to my folder, open up the form that I created, go to the response button, and uh, I would hit the three, the three button menu there, hit delete all responses. You can see I've already done that in this case. And that would clear out any, any um, artifacts for future data. Okay. Um, again, don't forget to go in and update your game dates, your evaluators, your officials that are evaluating, and any other data. Um, now, I, I did say this. Um, and just a quick reminder that if you do add in additional rows in here, or if you add in another point value, that, that's going to throw off the formulas. You're going to have to go back to 
all of these different formulas and break it down uh, bit by bit. Uh, column R here is automatic average, uh, and so you would have to update that array formula uh, if you wanted the averages to be coming at, coming across appropriately. So you can see here, this is actually based on column R of form responses one. Okay, uh, and then you would have to tie in your total average would then be updated here. So it's really important that you kind of think about some of those things before you start to change uh, too many questions over or add or remove questions. If I were to add another question here uh, or remove a question, it's actually going to shift the data in your form responses and all of those queries might not then be relevant anymore because column B is no longer evaluators, it might have shifted over to column C. So be careful about adding or removing columns and the effect that that might have on shifting data. Um, you could do it if you're fairly confident with uh, queries and, and moving that data around. That shouldn't be an issue for you, uh, but if you're not, I would, I would just caution you on doing so. I think one more thing that I wanted to note is that um, in the past, we've had a request. Um, one of the things that is challenging about this is, again, we want to do this on the fly. We want to make it as easy as possible. Uh, the reason why you have to evaluate one official at a time is then is because this allows you to capture the data vertically instead of horizontally. So if we had official, 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 and then we had grading, grading, grading all across, the, the, the complications that would cause in, in the query that I'd have to create over here would be boundless. Uh, so by reducing it to only one official at a time and the position that they were evaluating, being evaluated for, uh, we've made it really, we've solved that complex issue of matching and indexing um, all of the different um, officials when it comes to capturing the data for one official and how did they do. Uh, so that might be a project for the future, uh, trying to make that even simpler. Uh, but for right now, I think the, the simpler this tool is, um, hopefully the better. Uh, and my hope is that this whole process that we put together here um, is really something that uh, helps you all save time uh, when, when you're at tournaments uh, so that you're spending more face time with uh, students and providing that student development for them uh, or that feedback for them and um, really making this easier so that you can spend time on other things uh, which I know um, tournaments and, and different programs uh, administrative tasks like this can be quite extensive so reducing our times on uh, administrative tasks allows us to spend uh, our time on in other areas and I think we we can all agree that's that's a huge benefit for us um, so back to this how would you proceed from here um, one thing uh, like I was saying is you can have a free Gmail account to do this you can have if uh, a a Google Apps for Education account, and now it's called G Suite Education, I think. Uh, same thing for Google for Work. Uh, as long as you have access to Google Drive, Forms, Docs, spreadsheets, then you should be able to um, implement this in your program or your tournament. Uh, it's important to note that you don't have to have that access for your evaluators. So your evaluators are just simply given a link and anyone with the link, that link to the form can then access it. So when you are sending this out and you are sharing this, uh, just be careful about who you share this with and uh, you know maybe that information is, is shared along with uh, your evaluators. Hey, don't pass this link along uh, because if you do, then it's going to skew our data. Uh, so cool. Well, that's the updated tutorial in a nutshell. Again, I'm Ian Brown at Angeles State University. Thanks a lot for your time. Hope this helps you all.